Hi, everybody. My name is Emily McIntyre, and I could not be more excited to be here today, virtually, of course. Uh, I'm so grateful to OHO for letting me be a part of this wonderful conference, um, and I hope all of you are enjoying it so far. St. John's has been a partner with OHO Interactive since 2013. We've worked on several website redesigns together, have worked on a number of special web projects, and OHO also helps us with Google Data Studio dashboards for our digital marketing. A little bit about me, I am the digital media producer for St. John's University in New York City. I work in the Office of Marketing and Communications for the digital team, and I primarily build, maintain, and manage the website content as well as the university's internal email messaging for various audiences. I also train clients on how to use the CMS and sometimes dabble in other projects on the digital team, such as producing a couple of recipe videos for our social media channels, things like that. Um, I've been with St. John's for about four and a half years. Prior to that, I was the social media coordinator for the National Student Leadership Conference at Georgia Tech and the University of Washington. Long story short, my journalism background kind of sent me on a detour to higher ed, so that's how I am here now. Everywhere I've worked, I've brought my passion and mantra of putting human connection at the forefront of digital communication. I've applied it in many different ways, one of them being pushing for more accessible digital content, and that includes captioning audiovisual content. It seems like such a small thing, but it has totally transformed the way we communicate and how we con or how we consume what's happening on the screen in front of us. You might think, nah, not my organization, not my company, we're good. But that very mindset is blocking out hundreds, if not thousands of people who just scroll past your TikTok, exited out of your YouTube video, or checked out of your live, live stream simply because you didn't invest in captioning. I don't want that to happen, so let me help you out. From a young age, I've learned the importance of accessibility long before I even really knew what it was about. My deaf grandmother relied on her notepad and pen everywhere she went, and instead of going to the movie theater where they didn't have subtitles, we would bring Taco Bell to her room at the nursing home for movie night with subtitles, of course. In second grade, my class learned the Pledge of Allegiance in Sign Language because our teacher had a son who was deaf. In college, I became friends with a girl who had a cochlear implant and was hard of hearing. Beyond the deaf and hard of hearing community, I wrote a feature story for Ohio University's campus magazine about three individuals with disabilities and how the university did and did not accommodate them. At St. John's, our digital team is diligent about publishing content that is ADA compliant. So a few years ago, I proposed captioning our YouTube videos, um, but was met with a mix of positivity and hesitance. In a nutshell, I was told we wouldn't be able to immediately budget for a third party service to do that. So the solution was kind of simple. I volunteered to manually do it myself on YouTube Studio. My colleagues kind of laughed at me and thought I was crazy, um, but the truth is I really wanted to do it. Um, and I explained that transcribing is kind of in my blood as a former journalist. And if there's any other fellow journalists out there, a former fellow journalist, I'm sure you can relate all too well. Um, and I thought at least for a little while, it would open up our budget to um, you know, focusing on other bigger priorities. Because my main focus was going to be YouTube, um, the video producers and I worked together to come up um, with learning you know, the ins and outs of the captioning tool on YouTube Studio. Once we did that, we came up with a captioning process for videos that were already on our university's channel. Because I would be doing this in addition to my other day-to-day -day responsibilities, time management and planning were key. Before even touching YouTube Studio though, I requested the final scripts or copy of the videos in advance first. This was a super important step um, in the process to ensure proper spelling and grammar, especially regarding names of students, faculty, guest speakers, and that sort. After all, or after that, I consider the actual components of the captions. If music was gonna be added to the video or already added in, the style of music needed to be indicated in brackets. If there was a narrator, that needed to be indicated in parentheses, and the same goes for switching speakers. Lower thirds on videos are by no means necessary, but they're definitely convenient and helpful. Once all of this was in place, all I had to do was go into YouTube Studio and caption away. Once we got into a groove, our web and video teams collaborated on developing a more finalized marketing and communications captioning policy and workflow. We shared it with the account directors who then shared it with their clients and the work, however, at that point was far from done after that. Incorporating this step into our video project requests uh, took a lot of cooperation and extra communication from everyone, but it was definitely worth it. So where does that leave us now? 
I'm excited to say I no longer have to manually caption our videos because we've budgeted for a captioning service called Rev. If the video is produced in-house by us, we pay. If a client brings a video to us, they pay. And I would say it's been pretty evenly split. Um, we've made significant strides in that our account directors don't need to be reminded anymore that videos need to be captioned. And now we also caption all of our, or at least most of our social media content as often as we can. Um, that includes TikTok, um, Instagram Reels, and things like that. It has been quite the journey to get to this point, and I think that it's definitely highlighted challenges that there are in building campus culture around ADA compliance and considerations. Um, one of the biggest takeaways that I can leave you with today is that it can be incredibly tough to persuade people to invest in captioning, especially because it's not necessarily something that everyone directly benefits from, the good news, though, is that uh, at some point you will receive positive feedback. And when you do, I'm telling you, it will shift your whole perspective. And it's like so worth it. So don't give up. Um, and one last thing, if you do decide to invest in captioning, and especially if you're doing it manually like I did, I highly recommend investing in some high quality audio equipment um, as well as mics because of your ears, your patience, and your rewind button will definitely uh, thank you. Lastly, uh, I'll be sticking around in the chat window for a bit, um, so feel free to reach me there with any questions or comments. Um, if not, you can always reach me at my email address, which is emjmacdigital at gmail.com. That's mjmacdigital at gmail.com. Or you can hit me up on LinkedIn um, at Emily J. McIntyre. Thank you so much for everyone for tuning in and have an awesome day.